thank you all for being here. I, uh, I can't believe this. It's, I think I have to pinch myself to make sure that this is real. It's been so long in coming. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you for being here. And I mean, it's unbelievable. I'm standing here sharing with you the story of my family. And it's a family I never even knew existed. So thank you. Um, I, I have to warn you ahead of time, I have the tendency to get very emotional. So if I cry, I apologize. And that's why I have notes, because I, I got to stay on track. <laughs> So thank you for being here. First of all, I want to dedicate this evening to Andras Kaczynski. <laughs> Hetty and Marcy are here. They're, Hetty is with his wife, and, and Marcy is his son. Um, I could not have imagined. It's, it's been almost seven years when I first started working with Andras that our work was, would result in this, a book. And there's some books on the back, and that is the cover of the book on the screens. Um, a book that tells the story of eight generations of the Pulitzer family. Um, a family, as I said, I had no idea that I had. And a beautiful exhibition of the story, which, thank you, Zhuzha and Peter. Um, on the long journey to where we are today, Andras became a fellow traveler, a trusted partner, he was a pillar of strength, encouragement, and knowledge, and a brilliant sleuth with the intellect and the creativity to make obscure connections that would lead us to more and more discoveries. We started with tattered documents, nearly illegible letters, uh, faded photos found in a musty, unmarked box. Most likely, the box had been hidden by my mother and mysteriously, I would say miraculously, saved by Madeline, my sister, when a fire almost burned my parents' house down in Buffalo, New York. The box's contents survived World War I in some cases, World War II, the revolution of 1956, and my parents' house fire. So I, I was sure at that point it was a sign. It was time for me to find the truth. Looking back, I wish I'd embarked on this journey 40 years ago. That was when my sister Madeline accidentally <laughs> learned that her godmother, from her godmother, that our great grandmother Margit was Jewish. But there was the fear of diving into the unknown, of shaking up my world. My focus was elsewhere. It was really easier to think about anything but this. There were no clues to be found at home. Neither my parents nor my grandmother would talk about their past. And when they did, the stories felt generic and vague. They loved Hungary. They talked about their home. They talked about food. They shared memories. But they left out one small detail, that my father was Jewish. Even in 2006, when my mother was honored by Yad Vashem as a righteous Gentile, Nobody mentioned that my father and my grandmother were among those that he had saved. That there was so much I didn't know, that there was so much that no one would talk about, left me feeling unsettled and frustrated, longing for the truth. I knew it was there somewhere. If only I could find the courage to look, and with it a key to the past. I would talk about it with my friend Yona, who's sitting right there. She's the daughter of Holocaust survivors, and she became a voice in my ear, encouraged me, encouraging me to find my Jewish family and to write down what I found so they couldn't be lost and couldn't disappear again. Over time, the gnawing need for truth grew. It felt like a rock weighing me down. And when that long lost box materialized, its contents were the impetus that I needed. Andras and I had been working together for over a year when Andras began sharing our findings with Shuja Torni, director of the Hungarian Museum and Archives, and other colleagues. It coincided with the timing of the restoration of this beautiful synagogue. Andras asked me <clears throat> if I would allow our family stories to be exhibited. I approved. He wrote a proposal. It was accepted. And here we all are. Um, 
I had just finished my manuscript when Andras died. The book could guide Zsuzsa and Peter Forgach, who had taken over upon the death of Laszlo Reich, excuse me, so they could finish the exhibit. And so tonight, I want to express my gratitude to Zsuzsa and to Peter. They pulled together an incredibly talented team, and I know some of them are here. I don't know your names, but I really thank you. Um, it was just a, such a talented team to bring this exhibition to life. I thank you all, and I wish Andres was here to see it. Sorry. Um, I want to thank Henrietta Kiss for all she has done for the Rumbach, for the exhibit, and for this celebration. And I have so many other people to thank for where I find myself today. The support that Hetty, Andres's wife, provided was invaluable. She's continued to be a strong advocate for the Pulitzer Saga, both the book and the exhibit. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful to her and to your, her son, Marcy. Thank you so much. My sister, Madeline, and her husband, David, generously contributed funds to support the research. And with her daughters, and Sarah, Sarah and Robert are here somewhere. Where's Sarah and Robert? Sarah. <laughs> Sarah and Robert were tremendous emotional support, and I appreciate their faith in me to tell our family stories. <sighs> My husband, Ed, gave me his unwavering support. <laughs> Sorry. He's a blessing and a source of unending gratitude in my life. It breaks my heart that he could not be here with us today due to health reasons. It also breaks my heart that his daughter Margaret could not be here, as it had been her dream to be with us here in Hungary. But I so appreciate Laura, who's here with us today. She held ringside seats to all my trials and tribulations, and I'm so grateful to her for her, all her support. She's incredible. Several friends have traveled from the US to be here with us to celebrate, Yona and Marty. And her, and her husband, Marty, Eileen Spinella, and Patrick Spinoza, and Patrick Dunker, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thea Colleen, where's Thea? I don't know where Thea Colleen. And Anne and, <clears throat> Anne and Miklos Nicholson, and I also should mention Peter Forgotch and his family, different Peter Forgotch. And um, Peter's, Peter and his family, Peter's um, stepfather was uh, Tibor Baranski, who is also a righteous Gentile. Um, but I want to mention Anne and <clears throat> Miklos Nicholson. One of my unexpected joys from this journey was meeting new relatives. <laughs> Miklos and his wife Anne live in California. And Miklos is Zygmunt's great-grandson. And Zygmunt was my great-great-great-uncle. Um, it was Zygmunt's biography, Our Family History, that Andras found and gave us many of these stories. So thank you to your great-great-grandfather. I also met Juri Mate and his sister Susanna. Where are you? There you are. Um, and their children who live in Budapest. Their, <clears throat> their great-grandfather, Joseph Pulitzer, was my great-grandmother Margie's brother-in-law. An other book that Andres found provided us with valuable details of how my family survived the Holocaust, or in many cases were murdered. It was written by Gabor Viran, my father's first cousin, and it is wonderful that Gabor's nieces, Esther Pataki and Clara Kovach, are here with their families today. Thank you. Making new Hungarian friends along this journey has been another joy. Kati Barty helped Andras with translations, and I thank you deeply. And Thomas Sturyskaj, who unfortunately could not be here, he is in um, Qatar, he was an invaluable resource. While connecting from thousands of miles away in multiple time zones, he helped me navigate all the essential pieces to get things done. And one of the most important things, he introduced me to Levente Toth, where, where's, there you are hiding, <laughs> to Beatrice Kiss, who's behind the camera, who designed the book and the website, and together with Jolt, where's Jolt? Jolt, there you are, Jolt Nagy. They also designed the beautiful cover of the book that you can see on the screens. Oh, I look at it often, at the tree 
its branches <clears throat> reaching for the sky, and its roots, roots twisted and deep and intertwined with the Jewish st star of David that is barely visible. But there, an unmistakable, a vital part of the root system from which this tree grew. It's how I think about finding my father's Jewish family, my family, and finally understanding where it is I came from. To find your roots makes you stand stronger, taller, and what an incredible gift this has been. Sorry, but there's one more thing I want to share with you. I want to say something about my father. I will never know why my father kept his secrets. And it's tempting to judge him for hiding his Jewish roots. And I admit that I was angry when I found out. But the anger is gone now, now that I know the truth. My father was a remarkable and a complicated man. I don't know what I would have done had I lived through what he experienced. I've made peace with his decision, and I do not judge him. If you had asked me what I expected to find when I started out on this journey, I could never have imagined this. Finding my family, telling their stories, has brought them to life for me. Their stories, that their stories also bring Hungarian history to life is a tribute to them that I had never anticipated, and I am forever grateful. Sorry, but to know their names and to say them out loud, to know how they lived and how they died, it's a gift that has enabled me to honor their memory and to experience the wisdom and comfort of the Jewish expression of condolence. May their life be a blessing.